Kyle. I'm joined with Caboose, Rad Puppy, and Paul. Right. <laughs> Which I really should just say, Aaron, Alex, and Paul. I'm sorry, Paul. I don't, no what, what's your cool gamer tag? What can we, you know, let's superhero this up. Usually. Brother. What? Hey, brother. Oh, right. Okay, brother. Hey, brother. brother. Hey, brother. Like hey, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paul is a contributor for our website, uh, squadstate.com. So if you want to see what he's up to, you should check it out there. But today we got some interesting topics we're going to run down. I'm just going to pull them up right here. We're going to be talking about state of play. Uh, this happened on Thursday. PlayStation had a state of play. We're going to talk about the games that we liked, or maybe we didn't like it at all. Uh, we're also going to be talking about Suicide Squad, the game, the tease about it. Caboose is really excited about that one. We're going to be talking about xCloud's launch date and how the industry will change because of it. Plus, uh -huh. gaming mistakes and which ones were properly fixed. So, chat, mm. I see you guys in there. Think of those topics. When they're coming up, let your voice be heard in chat. Before we get into our first topic, though, I don't know if you guys saw over the weekend, uh, there was this question kind of trending uh, online on Twitter. And this came from Zelda Gift World, where they put it out there. They asked everyone, without revealing your age, what's something you remember in gaming that if you told a younger person, they wouldn't understand? Uh, I put trying to realign the buttons in my DDR pad uh, so <laughs> they are in the right position and also writing down recipes for Harvest Moon in my Hillboy <laughs> notebook. So, so those, those were real of my childhood, but what do you guys have? Uh, Caboose, do you want to start? I got a couple, actually. Um, okay, well, one... we don't have all day, Caboose. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> I'm going to rapid fire right. through them anyways, Camille. <laughs> uh, one of them is... is Blown on the Nintendo cartridge. That's that's a classic. Yeah, um, true. Another one, like I'll just say the Dreamcast. Like there's, I'm sure there are plenty <laughs> of people who have no idea. About were you that. were you one of those kids that thought the memory card screen, the screen memory card? Uh, I think it was called the. I forgot what it's called, but did you think that you could actually like it was more brilliant than what it seemed before you got the console? Uh, no, but I just, I remember oh, definitely I resetting that console a lot because games wouldn't start. And then the last one was writing down cheat codes off of websites to use in the yes. old Yes. Yeah. 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 I would have to go to the library and like print it out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Your parents let you use the ink to print out gaming stuff? No, what? I have to go to the library. <laughs> library. Oh, yeah, library. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's like 10 cents a sheet. Yeah. It was worth it, Confirmed. Though. Alex, as a kid, was made of money. Printing off all those uh, fun facts about okay, games. Okay, honestly, I used to print out, like, pictures of video game characters and, like, Neopets and sell them to kids at school. <laughs> for 20 cents. <laughs> <laughs> what? Damn. <laughs> Damn. 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 Oh, wait. Hustle. That's a hustle. Yeah, yeah. hustler right here. Selling pop at you know school, but I mean <laughs> selling pictures of Neopets. I don't know it, why they wanted it, but they wanted. It. <laughs> I would be a kid that would want that. Okay, well, yeah, I'll 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 sell you some later if you want to hit yeah. me up. <laughs> I'll hit you up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but since I'm talking already, I'll just go next if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah go for it. Something I very fondly remember is the squiggle light for like your Game Boy or Game Boy Advanced. Um, because they didn't have like a backlight yet. Mm. So if you wanted to play in the dark, you have like a little plug in like squiggle light. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, re I really miss that thing, especially um, like in bedtime and your parents or whoever think you're asleep, but then you're just like, nope. And you're just playing just into the covers. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good times. Right. And Paul, how about you? Yeah, I was playing, uh, I think I remember this pretty fondly. It happened last month. I was playing Valorant with some youngins. And I remember. Um, I think I disconnected and I came back to the voice chat and I was like, I just got ring of death or whatever, like just made a small joke. And then oh. they were like, what is that? And I was like, <laughs> oh, oh man, no. oh man. I was like, I'm, I don't even think I'm that old. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'll never forget yeah. when I got the ring of death. I yeah. like, I screamed. I was like, no. <laughs> and my brother's oh, like, yeah. what? what's the problem? <laughs> and yeah. it, it was a process that, what a, what a debacle that was back in the day. Oh, yeah. yeah, Ring of Death was real. I was I was lucky because I got the 360, like the not the first wave of them releasing. Mm -hmm. So I didn't experience the Ring of Death, but my friend had the Ring of Death, and then mm -hmm. was like, "Can I borrow?" Like, he asked me if he could borrow my 360 so he could play Call of mm -hmm. Duty. 
And I was like, <laughs> dude, you shouldn't have bought the first wave of it. This is mine. Um, so yeah, Ring of Death definitely affected some people, but not this yeah. girl. Not this girl. <laughs> um, Chad kind of like, Chad definitely feels uh, what you were feeling, Caboose, blowing on a Nintendo cartridge to make them work. That's real. Uh, the Dreamcast was a mistake in general. <laughs> Megalino says that in chat. Um, we have in chat Richie saying, having to change batteries on the Game Gear was a major pain. Okay, yeah, I, I heard that they had really big batteries. Um, Yukio said, vibing under the blankets. Hoping your parents don't notice that you were still yeah. awake on a school day. <laughs> yes. Yes, I feel that. And Stealth says, same here. The ring, the red ring was a childhood nightmare at the time. And I remember I had to wrap my 360 in a blanket to keep it from overheating. Oh. Wow. When did that make wow. it heat yeah. more? Yeah. What? Actually. Wait. Yeah, oh, yeah, true. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 thank you. Wait. Stop gamer. I, I hate to break it to you, but I don't think that works. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened. But we'll talk about that some other day. How do you keep your console cool? <laughs> no, that's a whole other no, topic. I know what Stealth's talking about. It was something where I remember people said there was like a, a DIY fix for the red ring where you had to like, I don't know if it was a blanket, but it was something like a damp towel or something like that. And it oh. could somehow. I don't know. I just I remember that there were a lot of videos online about stuff like that to try and fix your red ring because the whole process of mailing it to Microsoft and then them sending yes. you back to the console it took like a month. So yeah, they were backlogged. Out, I think. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm sure there were a lot of people trying to figure out like how they could just fix it at home. You know. I think that's a real thing, though. I think uh, that probably was the start of gamers maybe becoming a little bit of engineers engineering their way into yeah. having their consoles yes. work. But, uh, you know, let's get into the first topic. Uh, <laughs> that one was good. I feel like we could come back to this topic and that could yeah. be a whole like, yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we may yeah. have to do that. But uh, let's move on to PlayStation State of Play. So this happened on Thursday. It was the second or the first State of Play since they actually revealed. Was it the first? Yeah, the first one since they revealed the PlayStation 5. Um, I think it there'd be this hype. You think, right? Um, mm. but they actually, before the state of play even started, actually a day before, they put out a tweet pretty much saying it is no like there are no major announcements. People <laughs> calm down. Um, so that kind of was a thing on its own because I think a lot of people were looking to maybe getting prices. We didn't get that in the state of play, uh, possibly getting more details um on their exclusive titles yeah spider-man maybe even spider-man and avengers because they said there would be some third-party titles and vr titles that they were highlighting in this game um we didn't get any of that so unfortunately for some they weren't happy but you know what i looked to this and i said it was all right we got some cool announcements i'm just gonna go through them um right now we got to look at crash bandicoot 4 it's about time uh we got another we got details of how they will be working with um introducing new characters to play as we got hitman 3 news we got a braid anniversary edition i didn't really care about that one the pathless <laughs> Spelunky 2, Aeon Must Die, Ooh. or is it Eon Must Die? Aeon Must Die? Uh, yeah. Eno Mutationum? What die. the heck is that game? Bug Snacks, Star Wars Vader Immortal, Control the Pedestrian, Hood Outlaws, and Legends, Temtem, and Godfall. A great look at Godfall, actually. Um, so mm. I'm wondering, you guys, was there anything in that list or anything that happened in the state of play that really interests you? Paul, do you want to go first? Only thing. Okay, actually, I'll let oh, Paul go sorry. first. I'll let, yeah, I'll okay, let Paul okay. go first because I'm probably going to be pretty negative. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest positive, I don't know if you guys saw the game, but I think I'm most hype about The Pathless. Have you seen that one? Yes. I'm a big fan of uh, of movement in games. That's why like, I picked up Apex for a bit because the movement mm -hmm. was nice. Man, if you saw The Pathless uh, trailer, there was this scene where uh, the person was like with a bow running with uh, that fire monster and just shot it down. Like that movement cool. scene. In the trailer, yeah, that's sick. So, like, what if you're looking for, it? I don't know, but it's like it's pretty much like an adventure it's... game with arrows, um, oh, but okay. you don't have a definitive path, yeah. hence pathless. Yeah. <laughs> it's, open, it's open world without a map. Like, you literally yes. have to explore. Oh wow, that's pretty yes. cool. It's yeah. a really cool concept, and you know, Paul, it stood out to me because it gave me huge Breath of the Wild. Vibes. I yes. think I've said this so yeah. many times on the Squadcast. Everything now 
is reminding me of Breath of the Wild because I really want a Nintendo Direct to tell me about Breath of the Wild yeah. too. Um, so <laughs> this game was like, had a little hint of Breath of the Wild. And for me, I was like, I'm into it. I want it. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing that I was kind of concerned with because the gameplay looked a bit slow. You have to shoot arrows to kind of unlock the path. That part mm -hmm. seemed really slow, but when they showed that boss battle, that gave me huge Breath of the Wild's Blood Mood vibes. Mm -hmm. I was there for it. If they have a lot of that gameplay, I think I'll play. Yeah, exactly. Do you like the Blood Moon in, in uh, Breath of the Wild? Yes, it's scary. Every I think the first the time, time. The, okay, maybe not every time Ooh. I do skip it, but the first few times it happens, it really gives me the creeps, like the first times <laughs> I've experienced it. And then I'm like, this is cool. I kind of wish, <laughs> like Pathless, how they did that whole scene where it's like you're fighting and it's all oh, red okay. and like shadowed that way. I kind of wish Breath of, Mouth, while, ugh, Breath of the Wild took that in and kind of had that for like that blood moon uh, bit where it's just not the cutscene, but the gameplay actually changes uh, yeah. to be a scarier. But yeah, that, that was it for me. Alex, cool. was there anything that really stood out for you? Um, well, Crash Bandicoot 4 is really exciting just because like that's like a game I grew up on. And but I, I do want to I mean we were talking a little bit about this earlier, but I do want to mention how it's really cool that Temtem got a feature on like a big platform like this because yeah, we were just talking about this that it launched as a Kickstarter in 2018. And it was like mm -hmm. crowdfunded and like a, a, like I was someone who's part of the Pokemon community and seeing a bunch of Pokemon content creators be like fund this game because it's going to be just as good as Pokemon. And then now seeing it, like getting featured on a, on a PlayStation, you know, like with, with Sony. Yeah, like yeah. that's so cool. That's really cool. It's like, wow, dream big. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> well, for I mean, me, like we were, we were talking about this right before. Temtem, I was just astonished that they were brave enough to be in a PlayStation <laughs> state of play where they're clearly ripping off Pokemon yep. and they there's, don't there's care. There's good differences. Okay, okay like- Okay, Alex, keep yeah. telling yourself that. <laughs> <laughs> the way, there's like so many cool things, okay, about it. I don't even, I don't want to get into it because it's really complicated. She's getting heated. She's getting <laughs> heated. Yeah, I've never before seen. I'm about to, I'm about to get angry with you, Camille. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh no, Alex, no. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta take team against Caboose oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so to I'll, I'll hold it in for now. <laughs> but when we play League later, it might come out. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe. No, I'm just uh, kidding. I can't wait to watch that. Um, <laughs> no, you, no one wants to watch uh, that. Doe <laughs> Do in the chat says, what game yeah. is that? It's Temtem. Um, yes, it's, it's exactly like Pokemon. She's just not wrong. <laughs> it is like Pokemon, but it, it's innovative in its own regards. Like the the art style is a lot different. Um, the way you train and ca capture, I was going to say the Pokemon, <laughs> the Temtem <laughs> is different. What's the biggest uh, gameplay difference out of curiosity? I believe like the way you battle is a bit different and like, um, I think with Temtem, they actually did a focus on the competitive aspects in the sense that they wanted to make it like really viable competitively, I believe. Temtem um, Esports coming out. Yeah, no, that would be great. <laughs> honestly, have, Pokemon yeah. competitive is really cool. Oh, it's legit, yeah. So I would love to see like something actually become an esport like that. That'd mm -hmm. be great. Yeah. So it's Pokemon. It kind of, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> So yeah, Pokemon. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here because I know Caboose is gonna probably turn this a whole nother direction where I'm gonna get heated. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm gonna say uh, for me, I think what really stood out, yes, Crash. I really do like that they're introducing Coco into the mix. Um, you're able oh, to play nice. as her and a couple of other characters, and then they introduced inverted mode, which is inverted because you know they're going with the whole crash mm. theme oh, exactly. um where it's like you could replay ah. some of the <laughs> thank you thank you for that <laughs> um, but you could replay all of the or different worlds in crash with cool new art styles and i really love when games do this because you know that these studios like you know that they're putting the work into a game it's not just enough to play the game you're getting a whole like reskin but they're also like giving your character a different look as well once you play in those modes 
So I, mm -hmm. I'm interested to do that. And then they also, this was like completely a surprise announcement. I don't know if anyone expected this, but Hitman 3. Um, they showed a bit of Hitman 3, and then they said that it will feature a PlayStation VR mode. So it's like, I'm going to now be able to suit up in a full suit and grab my bald cap. You kill people and be, in real life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and be an agent on. myself. <laughs> I mean, like, that is so cool. I, I'm, you know, I don't have a VR set, but it's like experiences like that. Even like the Batman VR, like, those are the yeah. experiences. If I get more of that, um, where I just really feel badass, that's what I want to do. That's what I'm going to do. So yeah. I was interested about that one. And then, like, yes, Pathless kind of um, got my attention. But then Star Wars, Vader Immortal, that's another PSVR game that uh, it's like, I could be a Jedi. Yes. Let's do this because PlayStation VR games, they're actually pretty good. Like I, although I don't have one, I have tested some of them um, and they're, they're really good. Cool experiences. Um, yeah, no, this was super lame. Uh, okay. I <laughs> oh, say oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh my uh, God. I like it. I like it. Okay. So, so let me, like let me, it. let me say this. Let me say this. The, the PlayStation State of Play technically features some good stuff. Like Pathless looks cool, Crash 4 looks fine, Hitman 3 we already saw revealed to us, but okay, it's getting a VR. Bug Snacks is a trip. Um, the control, the control DLC was honestly the most exciting thing out of the whole state of play for me, because of the whole Alan Wake thing. Um, like Temtem, not like Pokemon's just not up my alley, so it wasn't something I was extremely excited for, but cool, whatever. And then Godfall was like the only thing that was a little hyped up, but that was a little disappointing for me. So like technically there's quite a bit of content here yeah. but i think the reason i think it's lame is because right now we're in this climate of the playstation 5 has been revealed to us we know what the yes. console looks like we know what some of the first party like playstation studios games that are going to be coming to the playstation 5 are going to be with spider-man miles morales with godfall which was shown to us so okay like i'll give them that but like plenty of others and yet still for whatever reason the first big state of play after they revealed the playstation 5 was to talk about the PlayStation 4. <laughs> hey, some of those titles are coming to the PlayStation 5. Like, well. what? Okay. What? What are okay. You I was yeah. just, I was so confused. And there was like, the, uh, and I'm, I'm a big fan of indie developers and, and people who make indie games and all that stuff because there's so much creativity that goes into that. A game like Pathless should be like a shining example, right? Um, but I just feel like, given that it was the first big state of play after the reveal of the PS5, this was the opportunity to like blow the roof off the place. Show us some gameplay about Spider-Man, you know, give us a little more from that. Spider-Man. Well, that was, that was I, a huge, that was like salt like in the wood. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Like it was, it was Doing salt in the wood. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, we got Tim Tim. I'm happy. But no, no but, I, but I, I, I don't feel know. bad. It's, it's just, it's a huge missed opportunity. I understand that they set the expectation that they said from the get-go, like, yes. We're not revealing anything big. Don't prepare for that. But don't you think that the fact that they'd even have to mention that would mean that they should have led with that as their first state of play? Like the fact that they even had to announce a state of play and be like, wait, wait, no, we're not <laughs> talking up, about the PS5. We're not talking about any of that stuff. Don't, yeah. don't you think that's a bad thing? Like that should mean that clearly they know people want to know about the PlayStation 5 so why are we hearing about PS4 games, man? Especially, honestly, like in all fairness, these are trailers and 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 showcases and stuff that could just be released online. They don't need yes. to be a part of a state of play. Uh, granted, I I kind of well, do like that they put up a put up a part of a state of play because like an indie game like a Pathless or like you know like Ten Ten that was crowdfunded and stuff, it does give them the platform as big as the hype around a state of play for people to see. But it's also stuff like they just could have put a trailer out online on the PlayStation YouTube channel, and there would have been still plenty of people watching, plenty of people exposed to those games. So I don't know. I don't want to knock on it too much. I'm not usually a negative guy, but I just I wanted to see Spider Man. Okay, <laughs> I to see That's it. even I just... if you showed like all of these versions, <laughs> what's replacing Uncharted, yeah. the next God of War? If there yeah. was no Spider Man, Caboose would be like, "What the hell is that?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, no, okay. but for real it's just we're so close to the launch we're yeah. only a couple of months away at a guarantee you know it's going to come out at the very latest in december 
So what what are we waiting for? Why are we de- like I saw a tweet the other day where the state of play finished and they were like, you'll know the you'll know the price of the PlayStation 4 after it launches. It's like that's true at this point. It feels like that's gonna yeah. be true. Like, <laughs> when are we gonna find out about the friggin' price of this thing? Stop playing this stupid game of chicken. They're they're preparing themselves to sell 10 million units. Clearly, they know no matter how much they price this thing, people are gonna buy the sucker. So, like who cares how much Xbox is going to price it at? You're going to win the initial console war, at least from launch. That's, let's see how you win the ongoing battle, all right, with your exclusives and stuff. There's, I just, I'm getting sick I, of it. I'm starting to I, get Caboose, sick of it. And Xbox getting, is part of that conversation too. Yeah, I, I, Caboose, you're getting so heated. Uh, Lawson in water. chat said, I want to pet Aaron's hair. It looks so fluffy. I think like all of your rage is just going to your hair and it's just kind of fluffing up. Um, but I think also, like, I think you're kind of on to something. I do appreciate, I don't get, okay. I don't get people who are mad at the state of play, hoping that it would give us major announcements when PlayStation did set that expectation. And you're right. not one of those people because right. you acknowledge they set it there. But I think what we're getting at is, is it even worth it to put out these state of play um, digital or presentations if we're not getting the information that we want? Like, Because I feel like people are just going to look at it and talk crap about it online when there were some good showings here. It, it kind of gives these games kind of a hard like yes. to step into yes. when people are just really um now impatient with wanting to get the news on more on the ca- console like the ui seeing all that and of course price right and mm-hmm. we're not we're, we're just waiting for that do you think it's worth um these companies like xbox or microsoft and sony or even nintendo they did the mini direct right do you think it's worth for these companies to do these um lackluster for lack of a better term uh presentations when they know what fans want paul what do you think yeah i don't know i oh i feel caboose's like fury there you know what i mean I, I'm, I'm with his hype on this <laughs> one <laughs> um <laughs> But I, th- but I think he's right. Like this could have been a big stepping stone for PlayStation. Like they 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 knew what their fans want, and I think like if that was like a hugely missed opportunity for them, like they could have used this as a stepping stone to kind of like hype up their PS5. But yeah, I don't know. That's my opinion. <laughs> you? Who'd you say? Sorry. <laughs> you say me? <laughs> Alex was like Tem Tem Pokemon. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Like, <laughs> She's daydreaming right now. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So, like, do you feel it's worth it for these companies to actually put out these digital virtual presentations when it doesn't have the news that we want from it? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure if you were asking me or 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 Caboose, but um, yeah. Actually, I do. I think uh, right now, I I feel like they're all just doing that because I think to put out content. Yes, for, because of Temtem. <laughs> well, I mean that's really cool for them, but also <laughs> like that's really cool. Eh? That's like the, that's good it for is. them. But uh, I think right now people are seeing it like it's better to put out content than to not at all, especially because everyone's at home and like just to keep keep the conversation going and keep Sony in people's minds. I, I like you know or the PlayStation Five in people's minds. Um, I think it's worth it for that. I mean, I know it sucks for a lot of people. And it, it obviously sucks for Caboose. He doesn't get Spider-Man. It's honest, <laughs> it's the most tragic thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I feel like I feel like there could be some news like uh like a corona um vaccine, and then Caboose would be like, whatever, no Not Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> Not Spider-Man. No point. No Spider-Man, no point. Um I mean, I, I totally get like the disappointment and like how frustrating it can be. But I think that it just seems like that's what a lot of people's play is right now. It's just to keep putting out content, keep doing these like weekly or bi-weekly or just as often as they can, um, little updates on things just to get people like hooked, especially because we're all at home. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. So they probably sure. want to take advantage of that. I get that as well. Uh, in chat, Doe says, Caboose is right. New consoles came out in, what, three, four months? We still don't know the price. Um, And and that's the thing. It's like, uh, I think Yukio mentioned it. Um, Everyone is sick of the game of chicken. And it's like, that is huge. Like, we don't know who's going to announce what the price first. Who's going to announce more details first? And now it's just like, maybe if we waited a week or two or even a month, we would still be hyped to get this news. Um, well, we're all going to be hyped no matter what, but 
I mean, it will have a huge, a bigger impact on us if we got that news within a month of the reveal of the consoles. Um, but yeah. now it's kind of like just tiresome, and it, because so many rumors are flying out there, it's kind of putting out mixed messages on what these consoles can mean uh, for people looking to buy them. And and here's the issue as well. And and again, this is not excluding Xbox. They're playing the same game yeah. of chicken, so I am just as annoyed with them about it. Um, here's the issue. There are, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there right now, especially since they did the big reveals for both consoles, that know there's a new Xbox coming, there's a new PlayStation coming. However, there also is probably some people out there that still don't know, and they won't know until they're like PlayStation 5, 699 or whatever. And once they get that information, they say, oh my God, new PlayStation, it costs this much, time to start saving. The later you announce that, the later, the like, it, it just causes people less time to save for these consoles. We're living in an environment right now where since the beginning of the year, a lot of people have been stuck at home, working from home, or maybe even out of a job, right? Yeah. And because of that, some of these people, they don't necessarily have the craziest, like most amazing financial situation to be able to afford a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. And the later, like the longer they wait to finally tell people how much these consoles are going to cost, the less time people have to start getting ready and preparing themselves to save up if they want to get the consoles. So yeah. like enough's enough. Just yeah. let us know whether you're Xbox, whether you're PlayStation, like what are you guys going to wait until the week before to finally tell people like, hey, pre-orders are up. Go ahead, go nuts. Here's how much it's going to cost. I doubt it. But also even a month before is pretty damn late to be waiting on announcing this stuff. If it's coming out at the end of the year, we know it's coming out at the maximum, what, four months from now. So what's going on? What's happening here? Um, hello? Preach it, Caboose. We definitely all feel that way. Uh, but unfortunately, we're just at the mercy of these companies. So we'll just have to wait.